seances and exorcisms. You probably wouldn't believe that this sort of thing went on in Pels or back in the day. However, in this story you will discover that in the far distant past it did. And furthermore, curiously, some connected residual energy does still exist today. Since publishing Pelsall Times back in 2001, I have been told many intriguing stories, many of which, because of their age, I have not been able to substantiate or research due to their nature. I hope you find the following two stories as intriguing as I did when I was told about them. The first story relates to someone who lived on Wolverhampton Road, Pelsall during wartime. Back then, the Wolverhampton Road was a very different place a time before many of the buildings there today were ever built, a time when only a few buildings were scattered along the road, and the beacon of it was the Swan Inn. Wartime in Pelsall was a very bleak and dark time, as all parts of the country back then. As with the rest of the country, people were desperate to hear from their fathers, husbands, brothers and sons, and news of any death was shattering. Such news gave rise to the popularity of spiritualists with whom people were keen to engage in finding word from their loved ones from the other side. I was told many years ago that during wartime there was said to be an old lady on the Wolverhampton Road who had such a gift and was always willing to use it to help the bereft and the searchers. In order to help she would engage in any form of spiritualism necessary, from Ouija boards to seances. On one occasion, however, the police were called to her property because neighbours had heard the voice of a German man in the property and feared that she had been taken hostage by a German who had somehow managed to get into the village. When the police broke into her home, they found her in a trance during a seance, speaking in the voice of a German man, to their shock and dismay. After this event, her undeniable talent was the talk of the village, and any doubters thought otherwise. Despite best efforts, I have never been able to trace the identity of the lady in question. The second story I was once told related to a young girl who lived on Pelsall Lane, Rushall, at a time when it was little more than a dirt track with a scattering of cottages. At some point in her life, the girl somehow developed the skill to move objects without touching them, telekinesis. Her unearthly gift soon made people fear her, as they viewed her as a witch and were certain that she was possessed. It was thought that she was eventually exorcised, after which she was never seen in the village again and forgotten about as the episode was probably swept under the carpet. Then. Many years later, the story emerged again. Shortly after Nicola opened Scorpio's hair studio on Pelsall Lane, Rushall, back in 2006, she had a rather strange encounter. An elderly lady and her daughter came into the hair studio, and rather than booking an appointment, the elderly lady was keen to tell Nicola about an incident that once occurred in the studio. The elderly lady went on to say that back in the 1930s, a friend of hers, who was 14 years old at the time, was exercised in what is now Scorpio's hair studio. According to the elderly lady, the reason why the girl was exercised was because she could move things without touching them, hence she was considered to be possessed. What concerned the elderly lady the most was that she never saw her friend again following the exorcism. Regrettably, Nicola never saw the elderly lady again, and so was never able to ask further questions about the incident. After being told about this by Nicola some years ago, I published the story in Ghosts Around Pelsall 2 in 2013, and made an appeal for readers to come forward if they knew anything about the exorcism. But unfortunately, nothing came to light. 
Nicola has always been aware of things that go bump in the night, at the farmhouse and in the salon, but has never been afraid. However, at 22.30 on the 3rd of July 2018, Nicola was shocked to see on her CCTV footage that a large oval orb was hovering and moving up and down over the empty crib in the salon. Stunned, Nicola couldn't believe what she was seeing and watched for a while before she ran down to the salon, switched on the lights and looked for the orb. She found nothing. Then she switched on hair dryers, blowing them in the air to find or break up any dust that may have settled. She then checked again on her CCTV, but the orb was gone. After seeing the orbs in the studio, Nicola thought straight away about the girl who was exercised there in the 1930s and that perhaps for some reason she had come back. On seeing the CCTV footage, I was intrigued and set to embarking on more research about the area. To my surprise, almost immediately, I discovered that in the 1920s one of the new council houses on Pelsall Lane was said to have a ghost. The ghost displayed poltergeist behaviour in that it was said to throw shoes and other things around the house and there were apparently a number of witnesses to this. People used to spend the night at the property to see if they could catch some paranormal activity. This may or may not have been connected with the 14 year old. If you know anything about either of these two stories please get in touch.